Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. So in this video, I'm going to show you a trick that you can use to brain dump all the nerves of the sacral plexus and their associated nerve roots, which is really the hardest part of this, in my opinion. The very first thing you do is write out the nerve roots for the sacral plexus. It's helpful to remember that the sacral plexus consists of nerve roots L4 through S3. So I just write them in a horizontal line like this, L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill each of these columns in by putting two more rows of nerve roots, except for the column with S3. So in other words, there's going to be a column for L4, a column for L5, a column for S1, and so forth. Just no column for S3. Okay? So we have L4, and we're just going to go two more down. L4, L5, S1. L5, S1, S2. S1, S2, S3. Then S2, S3, S4. Okay? And we don't do anything with this last column. So in other words, all the columns, except for the last one, have the next two nerve roots added in sequence uh, below them. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The next thing we're going to do is remember the acronym SIPS, S-I-P-P-S. So each one of these letters in SIPS represents one of the nerves in the sacral plexus. So the nerves are superior gluteal, inferior gluteal, posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, pudendal nerve, and sciatic nerve. Now for the S's, how do you know which one comes first? So the first S is superior gluteal. The way I remember this is we're dealing with the sacral plexus. So the sacrum is in the butt. So the big gluteus are first. So we have to have the gluteal nerves first. So superior gluteal is first rather than sciatic. And the way we deal with this is, well, L4, L5, S1. This column is superior gluteal, S in SIPS. So it'd be L4 through S1. The next column, L5 through S2, so L5, S1, and S2, this is the I, so that's inferior gluteal. The next column is S1 through S3, so S1, S2, S3, this is the first P, which is posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and then we have the next P, which is S2, S3, and S4, which is the pudendal nerve, S2 through S4. Now, your question is, how do you know which one of these P's comes first? Well, they're in alphabetical order. So P-O in posterior, P-U in pudendal, O comes before you in the alphabet. So posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, S1 through S3, and pudendal is S2 through S4. Another interesting thing you should notice about these four nerves in particular is that if you look at um, each of these, there are actually three nerve roots, three nerve roots each, and each one of them shifts by one over. So L4 to S1, L5 to S2, S1 to S3, S2 to S4. So basically you have a series of three in a row and they shift one over every single time you go to the next nerve. Hopefully that makes sense. And then the last one over here, the sciatic nerve, this is the big one, right? So being the big one, we have to now look at this first row. That's why we left the column off of S3 here. So the sciatic nerve is going to be L4 through S3. So this gives you five of the nerves in the sacral plexus. But there are a few more of these. And so the way that we're going to learn those is sips a pint of queso. Okay, um, a pint is in the United States is a unit of volume. Um, it's stupid to use that, but that's what it is. Um, queso is basically liquid cheese. Um, this is disgusting, yes, but sometimes the dumber something is or the more disgusting it is, the easier it is to remember. So we've got somebody sipping on a pint of queso. So he or she sips a pint of queso. And why do I say that? Because the remaining three nerves here um, start with a P, an O, and a Q. The P is going to be nerve to piriformis. The O is going to be nerve to obturator internus. And the Q is going to be nerve to quadratus femoris. So P-O-Q, pint of queso, sips on a pint of queso. Um, so I've got that right here. Disgusting, but it'll help you remember it, even though it's stupid. Now over here, we've got to figure out what the nerve roots are for 
uh, P O Q. And so the way I'm going to do this is if we look at this table right here of 12 nerve roots, I'm going to look at the two in the bottom corner, S1 and S2. I'm going to circle those. Then I'm going to circle the ones I have for inferior gluteal and superior gluteal. And kind of just go in an arrow like this, kind of go clockwise around. Okay, no real reason that you do that, but maybe if you're visual, this helps you. The reason I do that is because S1 and S2, uh, that's going to be nerve to piriformis. Nerve to obturator internus O is L5 to S2, which happens to be the same nerve roots as inferior gluteal. And then nerve to quadratus femoris is L4 to S1, which happens to be the same nerve roots as the superior gluteal nerve. Okay. Another way to kind of help you remember this if you don't want pine of queso, or if you want to just learn the POQ, is we're dealing with the sacral plexus. So again, back to the sacrum. The sacrum is posterior of the quads. Okay, Grammatically, that makes no sense, but if you think about it, the sacrum is posterior to the quads. It's in the back. right? Quads are in the front. So sacrum is posterior of quads. P-O-Q. Piriformis obturator internus quadratus femoris. So hopefully that makes sense. So this right here really gets us all of the nerves in the sacral plexus and all of their nerve roots. Now one more thing here. Um, there's a few other muscles here. Um, these are deep gluteal muscles that pretty much all act as external rotators of the hip. And it turns out that from superior to inferior, these muscles, as you find them, whether it's in a picture or in a cadaver, they go like this in this order from superior to inferior piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. This is a perfect picture right here from superior to inferior. Well, it turns out that you can actually group a couple of these together in a logical order. Okay? So piriformis, what do you think that's innervated by? Well, of course, nerve to piriformis. Piriformis is the largest of these muscles, and so it's going to get its own nerve. But these other two nerves, so the nerve to obturator internus and nerve to quadratus femoris, these are each going to innervate two muscles. And so we're going to group them as such. So let me actually go ahead and get this together very quickly. Probably should have done this beforehand. But it turns out that for nerve to obturator internus, we're going to be able to group that with superior gemellus. So it turns out that the nerve to obturator internus, L5 to S2 nerve roots, is also going to innervate superior gemellus. Now depending on the source, you might see that both of these muscles are innervated by nerve to obturator internus, or you may see, uh, if it's very detailed, a nerve to superior gemellus. However, the nerve to superior gemellus comes off of the nerve to obturator internus, but some sources will just say that the nerve to obturator internus innervates, of course, obturator internus and superior gemellus. And that's pretty handy because these two muscles from superior to inferior, which you should learn this order, they're right next to each other, and so they're grouped together by their innervation. Well, that's also handy because these two down here are grouped in the same way. So we also have nerve to quadratus femoris which is roots L4 to S1. This nerve innervates quadratus femoris and inferior gemellus. Now in the same way, um, some sources will say that uh, just nerve to quadratus femoris innervates both muscles, or if you're looking at a very detailed source, it may have nerve to inferior gemellus, which innervates inferior gemellus. However, that nerve to inferior gemellus comes directly off of nerve to quadratus femoris. Either way, we're grouping these two together, which is also pretty handy because they're right next to each other in this superior to inferior sequence. Okay, So we can say piriformis, innervated by nerve to piriformis, S1 to S2. We can say that obturator internus and superior gemellus are innervated by nerve to obturator internus, L5 to S2. And then quadratus femoris and inferior gemellus are innervated by nerve to quadratus femoris. L4 to S1. And then just remember this little rule right here with the POQ. The bottom two roots right here in the bottom left corner, S1, S2 is P. These nerve roots, L5 to S2 are O. And then L4 to S1 are Q. Now this whole thing looks like a lot of work. 
But actually, you could probably write this down in under a minute easily. You could brain dump this on the test if you practice doing this. And this can be a really nifty way to easily get all the nerve roots and the nerves for the sacral plexus. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.